Hi, my name is Amelia. I'm a clinical educator in endoscopy and a clinical trainer at the Trent Simulation Centre at Nottingham University Hospitals. I'm here today to talk to you about the work I've done with Paul Bailey on the simulation of endoscopy emergencies. We designed this study day after a learning need was identified for the endoscopy staff to have more training on how to deal with an emergency in the endoscopy setting. We wanted this to be given in a safe environment, so simulation was a good choice, and we also knew that across the country, several endoscopy departments had had success with um, endoscopic simulation days. Um, we designed the course with three simulations over half a day. The first course was a vasovagal following a colonoscopy. The second was a respiratory arrest following over sedation. And the third was a cardiac arrest following an upper GI bleed. Then we had to decide whether or not we wanted to do an in-situ simulation on the department or whether we wanted to use the simulation suite. We decided to go with the simulation suite because although in situ would have been more realistic, we thought there was more of a chance of staff getting pulled back into clinical practice in the area that we had designated for the simulation having to be used for an emergency. We wanted to make the simulation room as realistic as possible, so we got in our own endoscopy stacks, scope, one of our own endoscopists, and we made sure that the skill mix was the same as it would be in a normal endoscopy room. We also replicated the bleed trolley and the emergency kit box, as well as patient notes, referrals and consent form to try and make the process as realistic as possible. We streamed video feeds from the control room of endoscopy clips that we could change depending on the direction of the simulation. For structure, we got all our candidates to complete a pre-course questionnaire. We then spent a good amount of time introducing them and walking them around the simulation centre and introducing them to the idea of sim, as a lot of our staff hadn't done this before. We then did a pre-brief for them, giving them the patient's notes, background and situation. They then went into the simulation for about 15 minutes. We then debriefed them using the PEARLS model. And at the end of the day, we asked them to complete a post-course questionnaire. So you can see our results here. We had 35 responses from a good skill mix of staff. We then divided these responses into registered and unregistered staff. We also analysed the free text answers for learning themes. Here you can see the questions that we asked and we asked for responses on the Likert scale of one to five. Generally, these questions related to how they're confident they were to manage an emergency in endoscopy and before and after so that we could see whether or not their confidence and skills had improved at the end of the course. Here you can see our results. Our results were quite interesting. So you can see the yellow bars here are the registered staff responses and you can see a marked improvement in all of those. However, for the unregistered staff, particularly question six, you'll see a marked decrease in confidence. It was noted when we were doing the debriefs that a lot of the unregistered staff expressed that they weren't aware of any of these emergencies that could happen in endoscopy or how they would be expected to respond to them. It does therefore make sense that question six that you can see there as it's about managing the acutely and while patient did have a decrease in confidence in this case. And here you can see the summary of our learning themes for our free text answers. So we had themes around improved team working, improved communication, improved knowledge of emergencies and emergency protocols, and increased situational awareness. In conclusion, our course had a very positive response with 91% of staff saying that they found it beneficial and would recommend it to a colleague. All registered staff had a marked improvement in confidence after the course, uh, whereas some of the HCAs had a decrease in confidence and had a learning need identified, which was then followed up with their department. Here you can see my references and my email. If you have any questions or you'd like to discuss my work, please don't hesitate to get in contact.